Hey YouTube, Mucklock Douglas Bartholomew Original Dust Squire the Fourth here, and this is a guide on how to set up filters and add them to your streams or other recorded content. I will go over standard usage, stream deck setup, green screen setup, and using Twitch channel point redemptions to let your audience have some fun at the expense of your face. First off, let me show you the end result so you can decide if this is right for you. Hello! It's over 9,000! Are you ready, kids? Happy Halloween! Yeah! and many more. Here we go. Timestamps are in the description down below if you'd like to skip around to exactly what it is that you need. First, download Snap Camera. Go to snapcamera.snapchat.com and download the program. The URL is in the description down below if you'd like to copy paste. Once downloaded, click the gear at the top right hand corner and then choose your camera and resolution. If you plan on using a green screen, go ahead and click the Optimize for Green Screen button further down on the same page. Also, scrolling down even further, in the hotkeys, look for the Trigger Lens Effect hotkey, and be sure to set that to something. There are some lenses that have a special effect that kicks in when you press a certain key, and you want to bind that key to something so that you know what it is. Mine is Alt-1, you can use whatever you need. An example of this is the power-up filter. Every time that you use the key, in my case Alt-1, it gets more intense, as you can see here. Now, this part is for streamers. Make sure Snap Camera is open first, and then open your streaming software. Usually that's Stream Elements or Streamlabs OBS. In Stream Elements OBS Studio, go to the desired scene and add a source. You're gonna to wanna to add a video capture device, but instead of choosing your exact camera, such as your Logitech webcam, you would instead choose Snap Camera for the source. So now your webcam is going to snap and snap is going to your stream software in place of the webcam. For OBS Studio with the usage of a green screen, after you've added snap camera, right click on it and go to filters. Here you can see a little bit of a wider shot and you can see my messy room in the background. Don't look at that. <laughs> my green screen is behind me, which I've already filtered out with the chroma key. This is where you would add your chroma key. Note. A few filters will look strange because of the green screen. For example, this dancing eggplant. It looks fine in the snap camera, but because of my green screen, you can see down here at the bottom left, the top is transparent because it's green. Now, there are still hundreds of filters on here that work just fine with green screen. So, so don't fret, you'll just have to ignore the ones that have a lot of green in them if you are a green screen user like myself. Now for Streamlabs OBS, AKA Slobs, we are going to pick the scene that we want to add the camera to, go over here and add a source, and add a video capture device. And for the device in question, you are of course going to choose Snap Camera. Once Snap Camera is added, if you are a green screen plus Streamlabs OBS user, right click on video capture device, go to filters. Here you can set your chroma key. Once again, in the wider shot, you can see the background right behind me is hidden because of the chroma key, and you can see my messy study on the edges past the side of it. Stop looking at that! Now we're going to find some filters that we like in here and bookmark them so that we can use them on demand. Simply browse through here. You can just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, or you can search by category or try to search up here for something that you have in mind. This button right here shows you the most recent ones you use. So if you use something recently, you really liked it, but you forgot to bookmark it, you can click on that. And here's a bunch of the ones that I've tested recently or ones that I often use. Once you find something that you like to use, you just mouse over it and you click the little star up here to fill it in. What that does is it moves it up here to the favorites list. By clicking on the star at the top left hand corner, that opens up the favorites bar and it has every single filter that you have clicked the star on. And if you change your mind, you can just undo the star and it will disappear. You can turn on or off any filter from your favorites using this sidebar. And for some people, that's enough. You know, they just like having this over on the other screen. They'll just reach over, click it when they need it. Or if you are not streaming live content and you're streaming pre-recorded content, this is plenty. But let's take it a step further. With the favorites sidebar open, click Lens Hotkeys at the top right of it. If you are a streamer, you may want to be able to summon filters on demand for entertainment value. If you do not have a stream deck, I'll come back to that later, you can assign them to keys that you rarely use. For a very long time, I used the numeric keypad. You just find a filter that you like, Add, click Add Hotkey, and put whatever you want in there. If the game that you're playing does not require the numeric keypad in my earlier example, just bind them to numeric one, numeric two, numeric three, and you can just reach over and tap them and summon the filter easy as pie whenever you need it. If you do have a stream deck, 
Assign them to a key combination you would never accidentally hit or the keypad until you run out of keys. You can see here for many of mine, I've got Alt Numpad 1, Control Numpad 3, and all kinds of crazy key combinations I'm never going to accidentally press. And I'll show you why. Now, here is my Stream Deck sitting on my desk in the camera shot, and here is the Stream Deck software on the screen. If you're unfamiliar with Stream Decks, don't worry about this, you can just skip ahead. If you use one, take note, this might be useful information for you. Now on the Stream Deck, make a key on the deck that hits that odd key combination that you set up earlier. For example, Control Numpad 6 was the hotkey for the power up filter. Add a little title to it if you fancy it. I like to take a screenshot of my with the filter and put it there so I could see at a glance exactly which key does what. Now with that done, I can turn the filters on and off by simply clicking the key on the Stream Deck. Just make sure that your odd key combination does not interfere with whatever program you're running or streaming. Just test it when you aren't live, open up the program, hit your key that it will simulate control numpad 6 or whatever it was that you did, and make sure it doesn't mess with anything in the program before you go live and have a weird mishap. The Snap Camera extension. If you stream to Twitch and you wish to do so, you can set it up that Snap will automatically put a filter on your face when someone subscribes to your channel. Just an extra fun thing. I myself don't use it for this feature, but let's go over how to do it in case you want to do so. Click the little Twitch icon at the top right hand corner. That will open up this screen, hit open Twitch, and it says the Snap Camera extension is now installed. Open Snap Camera to play with lenses. Now let's see exactly what that did. Now I'm going to open up the Stream Manager and go to the extensions button over here on the left hand side and you'll see that snap camera is now set as one of my components. You can click the little cog to make sure the setup is complete. Then you can head back to the snap camera program and it's suddenly on this screen. Click activate subscription lenses and there's a bunch of very simple settings here you can use as well as choosing the filter that will pop up when people sub to you if you wish to use it in that manner. If you change your mind and you don't want that it's as easy as deactivating that component. Lastly let's cover the use of channel points on Twitch to allow viewers to redeem or purchase the filters. And for those of you that aren't familiar with Twitch, this is with fun money. It's monopoly money. You earn points as you are watching a stream and you can spend them, and I'm doing air quotes a lot right now, you can spend them to have something fun happen. Some streamers make, you know, you make them do push-ups. Some of them you can mute another user for a time. And in our case, we're going to do filters. So we're going to go to community and then channel points. If you've never been in here before, enable it, name your points. Mine are called Dennis Dollars. Dennis is a frequent character on our stream. And we're going to go to manage rewards. In here, you can see all the filters I already have set up. I've got a couple that are turned off that I tired of after a time and other many others that are still enabled. All you would do is add a new custom reward. Once in there, you would choose a name for the reward, a brief description of what they're getting. Keep in mind that some of these people may be watching the stream on a cell phone with a tiny screen. So try to keep it concise. Mine says this filter for two minutes, a cost and how much points it will cost them. Put in a picture of the yourself with the filter on so they can see at a glance what they're getting. And I recommend activating limit redemptions per stream. The filters are fun. You don't want 100% of your stream to be filters. So add some sort of limit in there. Keep in mind the limits are separate for each one. So mine is currently set to four. So that's four of these, four of these, four of these, etc. Set it up however you like. Now, if someone redeems a filter during your stream, you will see it in your activity feed. Just like right here, 17 hours ago, Pump Tricks redeemed a potato filter. It was right before the end of my stream, so I did not get to it. However, it is still in the queue. At the top right of your activity feed, click on the three dots and click on Manage Requests. That will open this screen. If you use filters a lot while streaming, you'll want to open this at the beginning of each stream and set it on another screen somewhere if you've got the screen space to do so. Here, if you get a request for a filter, it'll pop up in this queue and it will sit here until you mark it as complete. So when I get a potato filter request, I can hit the potato button on my stream deck. I'm now a potato. I've got a dark background. I know that this filter has a special thing. When I click that key that we bound earlier, it will make the background disappear. And now I'm just a floating potato and I can click mark as complete once I've done it. I've also got a little timer on my stream deck so that to remind me after two minutes to turn the filter back off, it will not automatically turn off. So I've got a little timer here for that as well. And once you've marked it as complete, it will leave the queue simple. And now you too can power up when things get tense. Reach out when you lose. Greet the ladies in the stream. Greet the horde 
boys in the stream? Act goofy? Sell potions? Act cultured? Or be a potato? All at a moment's notice. And that's all there is to it. Find some filters that work for you to entertain your viewers and have some fun. That's all for today. Until next time.